Hello, Callan. Phil Harris here. It's been two days since Sir Keir Starmer made his ill-fated communist speech where he told the concerned citizens of the United Kingdom that they were far right. In fact, it's been the narrative pretty well all over social media and the mainstream media are blaming certain individuals for the unrest in the country. How myopic are people? How short-sighted and nearsighted are people? A wise man once said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. We are seeing the outworkings of that in this once great nation. So, by Sakir's definition, as a far right, right priest in the Church of God, I feel that it is my duty to respond. Sakir, I have no idea who is advising you. You received a mandate on the back of the lowest electoral turnout for decades and probably the second lowest turnout for a general election in UK history. You gained a mere 11 million votes, which means that nearly 39 million people did not vote for you and are not interested in your policies. And yet you have the audacity and the propensity to insult the majority, the silent majority of our nation. Today, there is an uprising across this once great nation as the political liberal elite have removed themselves and placed themselves above the people that they are supposed to serve. History tells us that this does not end well. History repeats itself. It has to because nobody listens. In recent days, we have seen an army officer stabbed 12 times. We've seen riots in Leeds for three days where your government was incapable or unwilling to take action other than to return a vulnerable child to the family from whence the child was required to be removed for concerns over their well-being. Two thugs violently assaulted three armed police officers in an airport, breaking the nose of a female officer, and they've not even been charged. Then riots in Rotherham for the same people who committed the assaults. Three little girls were murdered. Let me say that again. Three little girls were murdered at a holiday club. Ten were injured. And yet you allow the mainstream media to portray the mass murderer as a sweet choir boy. Sword fights and machete attacks occurred in South End. 28 men were convicted of gam graping a British girl receiving 400 years because of their crimes and those crimes being so revolting and brutal that they can't even be published. Eight men charged with gang raping another British child. We then have the report of a woman who was beaten to death by two Somali immigrants whilst walking her dog. Knife murders and knife crime are out of control and they are normally committed by a certain demographic. But you don't speak about those. You speak about the far right, the silent majority, those who were centrist a few years ago until the liberal elite chipped away at moral standards of family in this nation. We've then had seven months of 600,000 plus people calling for the genocide of Jews. We've watched a tier, two tier policing where people can wave a Palestinian flag or a Hamas flag and not be in any way, uh, see people not in any way see that as concerning, but wave a British flag or wave an Israeli flag and you get arrested. We've seen a postman pushed onto the tracks of the tube. All of this is happening whilst we prostrate ourselves before Islam. 
117 million has gone to mosques. Six billion has been spent on illegals. And yet you announce that you intend to freeze and starve pensioners. We have the receipts for your hypocrisy at the dispatch box. We've seen decades, decades of Islamic terrorism. And then recently, pro-Palestinian and Black Lives Matter marches that you never condemned because of the Labour Mayor of London and your large Muslim voter base. And let's not forget, just stop oil. What is your response? You condemn the centrists of yesteryear who are protest protesting about children being murdered, who are protesting about children being murdered. The discrimination of the two-tier policing against the native British pop population, where you seek to ban far-right protests, far-right protests. In 1919, Britain was in revolt. That time it was the socialist, socialists, or dare I say the communists, that were revolting. The government of the day were terrified. Just over a hundred years later, we're here again. The difference is that the sensible people, the real grown-ups who are now standing up for this nation and for liberty and for freedom and all that is good. You can call us what you want, but as we peacefully take a stand, the numbers will grow because we realise that a house divided cannot stand. Why is that statement so important? It wasn't just a wise man that said that. It was the son of the living God, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And you, Sakia, have divided the house. The nation has been allowed to be overrun by yourselves and by previous governments, by people who share different values and who seek to subdue us. That mustn't happen. We are happy for people to come here and be part of this nation who want to contribute and integrate but that is not what you have championed and so people are on the streets and the momentum will grow it will grow it's time to have a rethink it's time to put the wrongs right and it is time to stand up for the good people of this nation and can I say to the good people of this nation, where we do have to stand, where we do have to uh, march, where we do have to quietly gather in cities and towns all over the nation to make our stand. Can I say this? Can we make sure that our protests are honourable, are peaceful, and we are not drawn into conflict? But now is the time to make a stand now is the time for us to take our nation back before, before it's too late. Thanks for listening. I'll see you again soon.